Hey guys, back again with another video, a review on Yakuza 0, uh, a pretty recent release here, and this is a series that I'm a fairly big fan of. Uh, I did play Yakuza 5 not too long ago, and I uh, talked about it in a games I played recently video. I didn't finish it. Uh, it's actually the first Yakuza game I've played that I wasn't able to finish. I uh, It just, I don't know, for whatever reason, the plot in that game just did not grab me, and I found the game to be pretty dull. And unfortunately, it does look like I stopped playing it just as it was about to get good, uh, at least a lot of people were saying. Uh, and I do plan to go back to it at some point, but I, I didn't actually, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to pick this game up. Uh, but you know what, I figured there's so many games that came out on the day that this came out that uh, I wanted to give the support to this series. It's a series that I, I feel hasn't gotten uh, like a lo whole lot of recognition in the West. Uh, it's very popular in Japan, but... Uh, the, yeah, we haven't had a physical release of one of these games in, in North America for quite a long time. And I wanted to support the series because it's a really good series. And uh, this is a great game. I, I really enjoyed my time with it. It's also a great game for newcomers to the series. Uh, this is kind of like a prequel to the entire series. Uh, it takes place in the 80s, uh, late 80s. And uh, it's, it basically takes place before all the events of the later games. So it's a good jumping in point. Uh, and then also, if you played a lot of the others, you'll you'll recognize you know some characters here, uh, which is which is always neat to see. Uh, so we'll talk about the story first off. Uh, two different characters in this game. Uh, of course, you play uh, Kazuma Kiryu, who's who's kind of in basically almost every Yakuza game, uh, and uh, he's he's basically like each character has their own plot, and the game kind of takes place during chapters. Uh, there's I think 16 or 17 chapters overall. And of course, uh, both characters' stories kind of intertwine, uh, but in some really interesting ways, and in ways uh, that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it's actually pretty cool how like the plot kind of uh, kind of goes throughout the game. Uh, it's a fairly complex story in this game. Uh, now, the Yakuza games, I've always found the stories in these games to be really endearing, but like over the top and goofy at times. Uh, for instance, Yakuza 4, the story in that game was like in absolutely insane. There was so much crazy uh, crazy stuff in that game. It was really stupid, uh, but it, it, and it never really took itself quite too seriously, like the main story I'm talking about here. Uh, but it was very entertaining. Uh, Yakuza 5, from what I played, was like really serious. Uh, they, it really, like the tone was a lot more serious, and that's carried over into this game as well. Uh, the main story here is very serious, it's very dark in tone, uh, but it's incredibly engaging. Uh, the, basically, uh, the story here, like, Kazuma basically, uh, he's basically collecting debts uh, from, from people, and uh, basically he gets involved with, like, this murder that he didn't commit, and he's kind of framed, basically, and there's, like, this vacant lot uh, that's basically, uh, like, uh, the... the the focus point of like a power struggle between the various groups, uh, of the various like mafia groups in Japan, uh, and so the main story you're kind of uh, as a Kazuma you're trying to you know uh, make make it so that you know that uh, people understand that you're not the one who who, who killed this this person, uh, and then the other character is a uh, girl Majima, uh, Majima, another character in the series, uh, and if you have played a lot of the other uh, games in the series, you'll notice his personality in this game is quite different and you'll see how he came to be the character he is in later games and his story is actually really interesting as well it has to deal with the vacant lot as well uh, that's kind of like the the main focus point of the story and I might, I'm probably doing a bad job explaining the story here because it's really complex there's a lot going on there's a lot of characters you have to keep track of uh, but it's it's really interesting uh, from start to finish I was always engaged uh, even though some of these cutscenes do go on for a long time uh, and some aspects of it can be kind of confusing, but uh, basically uh, Goro Majima, he runs this cabaret club, and he basically uh, wants to get into back into the Yakuza. Uh, he was kind of like kicked out, basically, and uh, they explain why, uh, and that's one of the more interesting elements of the story. Uh, but basically, you have to do like a hit uh, to get back into like the grace graces of the, of the Yakuza, and I don't really want to explain uh, or spoil who you have to take out, but it's it's very interesting to see the plot kind of proceed from there. Uh, the characters in this game are, are, are fascinating and outstanding. Uh, you know, at this point I am maybe a little tired of Kiru at this point, but uh, we, you know, we, we haven't really seen him this far back before, like the late 80s, so 
uh, it, 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 it is interesting to see. I'm just, I don't know. I think for future Yakuza games, I don't know, it's, it's just always interesting to see this character. Like, he, it's it's the classic, uh, you know, just when I think I'm out, they pull my the pull you back in, you know, that famous quote. It's it's very, like, it's, it's very Godfather in that way. Uh, but yeah, the story is definitely one of the highlights of the game. It's not as dumb as, as previous games. Uh, there's definitely some like crazy shit in this game, but uh, overall it's a very serious storyline that's almost always engaging, uh, even though the pacing can be a little uh, rough at times. Uh, and, and this whole two-character dynamic I thought was really well done as well. Um, but moving on to the gameplay uh, part of this game, it, it plays very similarly to previous games. Uh, you have like these basically very dense, uh, somewhat open areas of Japan. Uh, the city uh, Majima is in is a part of Osaka, and then uh, Kazuma Kiryu is in like a part of Tokyo. And they're like these very densely uh, packed parts of, of, of like a city. It's not like a huge city. This is not like an open world game, really. Uh, it's, but there's a lot of activities that you can do uh, in, this, in this kind of world. Uh, there's a lot of mini games carried over from previous games. Uh, there's like there's so many things that you can do in this game. Uh, you can you know go fishing. You can play all like these Japanese parlor games. Uh, there's uh, arcade games like Outrun and, and I think what Space Harrier and things like that. Uh, I, there's bowling. There's a bunch of stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of them are carry with carryovers from previous games. And if you've played them before, you, there's not much to see there. Like a lot of these mini games I saw and I was like, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. Uh, but some of the new mini games they've added this time around are actually really involved and engaging. Uh, some of the new ones, there's like a cat fight ring that you can uh, bet on. Uh, that's pretty simplistic. There's not a whole lot to that mini game, uh, to be fair. But it, it's kind of like an interesting uh, addition. Um, the series has always kind of dealt with censorship uh, before, where there's been a lot of risque elements that have always taken out of the Western releases. This time around, they didn't actually do that. You have like these weird, uh, tel like there's the telephone club portion of the game, which is pretty hilarious, but there's also like these uh, erotic videos that you can unlock. Uh, if you get like these cards of these Japanese, I don't know if they're models or whatever, but uh, you watch like these weird, like erotic videos where like these girls, like real girls, like they're, it's not like, uh, you know, in, in game graphics or anything like that, are like doing like these kind of sexual poses and like a lot of them are like carrying balloons. It is so fucking odd. Uh, it's absolutely bizarre. I've heard some people call them like soft horror videos, which that to me doesn't make any sense. Like they're not soft horror videos. They're they're really tame, honestly, but at the same time they're very strange. Uh, and I don't find them all that erotic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's this weird part part of the game. Uh, this this game's crazy. It's got that Japanese charm that a lot of the other games in the series have had. Uh, some of the more involved mini games that I really like, they're, they, you unlock them way later in the game. Uh, but each character has their own like really involved mini game that kind of ties in with the combat system. Uh, Kazuma is, uh, has like this real estate mini game where you can like buy up properties throughout the city, and then you can actually get earn money uh, from these properties. And you kind of assign like uh, managers uh, and bodyguards to each of these districts. Uh, so it's like this heavily involved mini game that will get you a lot of money. And money is like a, a, a kind of like a theme uh, in this game. Uh, basically, every fight that you uh, take part in gets you money. Uh, money is what you use to upgrade your abilities, and money is what you use to invest in this real estate mini game. Uh, it, it's just all over the place in this game. You can uh, basically uh, throw money around in the environments to avoid random encounters. Basically, uh, if you find enemies in this in the streets, they'll like run up to you and get, you immediately get into a fight. Uh, the game is almost like a JRPG in a lot of ways. Uh, where basically money is almost like your experience points that you're using to upgrade your abilities. Uh, each character has their own different fighting styles and skill trees that you're kind of putting points into, uh, you know, with your money. I'll, I'll talk about the combat a little later, but uh, yeah, the real estate mini game is actually like really involved and actually is a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, you know, there's so many games out right now that I didn't want to put too much time into it, uh, but it's the kind of mini game that you could spend hours and hours uh, kind of going through. Uh, Goro has the cabaret club mini game where you kind of manage your your cabaret club and you kind of hire girls for your club, uh, which is really cool. It's another way to earn money. Uh, you kind of like level up your girls and you can like dress them up and do all like this weird shit like that. 
Uh, and then you, oh, there's like a mini game involved with it too, where you're actually running the club yourself and you're making sure like the customers are happy. Uh, it's this really cool, charming mini game that again, I didn't spend too much time with, but uh, it's there and you can spend uh, a lot of hours with it. Uh, both these uh, mini games, the real estate one and the cabaret club one, have their own storylines to them as well. And if you actually fully complete them, you'll unlock a fourth char a fighting style for each character, which is really cool. And again, it's the best way to get money in this game. So if you want to fully upgrade your characters, uh, these mini games are the way to do it. So uh, really top-notch stuff there. Uh, while you're exploring the environments, there's a lot of crazy shit you'll run into. Uh, there's side quests. Basically, each character has their own stub stories that they can find uh, throughout the cities, where you'll help different uh, NPC NPCs and. The side quests are, are a highlight for me. I love the side quests in this game. For the most part, they are fantastic. Now, they're they're pretty minor. They don't last a long time, and usually the rewards aren't too great. You might just get like a weapon or a piece of armor or some money. But the side quests are almost always hilarious or interesting. Uh, there's a lot of variety to these side quests. Uh, one side quest that uh, gets a lot of mention is this dominatrix side quest, where you have to help this dominatrix become uh, more aggressive. And it's, the dialogue is absolutely hilarious. Uh, they did such a great job with the translation for this game. Uh, like, this game made me laugh out loud at various points. And every time I would run into a side quest, I would immediately uh, get it done. Because I just, I love to see what they would come up with next. Uh, there's a side quest where you have to buy, like, this little kid a porno magazine. Uh, like, it's just, there's so much hilarious shit in this game. And I, I really... Uh, I really wanted to do every side quest I could come across, and in fact I did a majority of them. Uh, a lot of my playtime was, was taken up by these side quests. Uh, absolutely amazing, and it's like, I, you know, I find a lot of games these days just have terrible side quests that just completely waste your time. Uh, Final Fantasy XV, for example, and it was just nice to play this and have side quests that were amazing. Uh, and I think there's actually a big improvement over the side quests in the previous games, which were decent, but they never really, I don't know, they just weren't as funny as they were in this game, or as entertaining. But, um, yeah, moving on to the combat. The combat is the weakest part of this game, and I think it's probably one of the weaker parts of the series. Uh, it hasn't progressed in a way that uh, I would hope, although I don't really know what exactly they would do uh, to really uh, make it better, because at, at its core, it's a very simple beat-em-up battle system. Uh, now, it's got, like, like the, the the feel of it is pretty good. Like punching and kicking enemies feels great. Uh, the finishing moves in the in these games are so brutal. Uh, the combat itself is just really visceral, but it can get uh, repetitive. It can get old really fast. Uh, a lot of the bosses are like damage sponges basically, and a lot of the chapters will throw like so much combat at you at the very end, uh, and it can get pretty tiring. Uh, they do try to kind of uh, liven things up with the style system, which is new for Yakuza Zero where each character has four different fighting styles, uh, and, and you kind of control a little bit differently. Your move sets change depending on your styles. Uh, the best style for me was Goro Majima's breakdance style. It was really fun, where you had all these breakdancing type moves, uh, and the sense of speed was exhilarating, uh, and it was just really fun to pull off those moves. But, uh, I don't know, the combat, it just, it just, I don't know, after a while it just kind of got old for me. Uh, enemies can uh, very easily stun lock you, and this is this is basically the problems with the combat I have in this game apply to the previous games as well. Uh, enemies can stun lock you really easily. Uh, enemies that carry firearms are incredibly annoying. Uh, like your sidestep really doesn't help all that much to dodge firing like from guns. So if you're fighting enemies and there's an enemy in the distance that has a gun, uh, it's very hard not to get hit. And then you just kind of get shot and you like kind of get stunned for a little bit and then enemies can keep attacking you. Uh, it's really annoying when you fall to the ground and have to get up and then enemies can keep kicking you and then getting you into more stun lock combos. Uh, the combat, you know, it's not the f most fluid combat ever, uh, unless you're, you know, doing something like the breakdance style. Uh, it's definitely a little on the clunky side, uh, and it's it's not a huge improvement over previous entries in the series. Uh, it, it does have its strengths. Again, I like the visceral feeling of it, and the finishing moves and the heat actions in this game are, are pretty great. Uh, you have, like, a heat bar that basically fills up that you can basically do kind of finishing moves if you press triangle. Um... But yeah, the combat, it's definitely not one of my favorite parts of the game, but it's its fine. It's not like, it's its not horrible or anything. It doesn't ruin the game. Uh, but I don't know, I do, 
I don't know. I do wish they would like really vamp up the combat and just completely overhaul it like crazy. I'm not sure exactly what they would do, but I, I do wish they did did do something. Um, but yeah, and other things as far as gameplay, uh, there's a whole lot I could say. Like, there's a lot of shit to do in this game. You could spend like hundreds of hours playing this game. I mean, one thing I will kind of mention, that if you haven't played this series uh, before, don't go in expecting a Grand Theft Auto type experience. It's very different from that. Uh, this is way more story focused, and the mini games are basically diversions. They're the kind of thing that, oh hey, I, I want to try this for a little bit. Uh, it's not this massive open world, there's no vehicles to drive. Uh, you know, it's 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 very it's kind of a, a constrained game. Uh, it's, you know, these very densely packed environments that have a lot of life to them and vibrancy, but uh, it's it's not your typical open world game. Uh, it's it's very different from that. Uh, but I I do I do quite enjoy the gameplay in these games. Uh, and this is I think the the best yet in the series. Uh, so anyways, moving on to the visuals. Uh, you know this isn't originally a, a PS3 game, and you can tell with a lot of like the animations in this game. Uh, the, ci the you know the cities itself uh, look pretty great. Again, densely packed with detail and. I love the 80s uh, setting that this game has and the whole 80s style. Uh, the use of color and lighting in this game is really fantastic. Uh, I like the menus quite a bit. It runs at a consistent 60 frames per second, which is great. Uh, there's definitely some highlights of the visuals here. The character models overall look quite good. Uh, the faces have always been a highlight in the Yakuza games. They spend a lot of money, I think, making sure like the facial animations and technology are top notch. And it, they, it really, this game has some of the most realistic faces. Uh, I've seen in games. Uh, they're really impressive. Uh, the cutscenes are quite impressive as well. This game is weird though with its presentation, uh, where you'll have like your typical cutscenes, but then you'll also have like these static cutscenes uh, with characters just like standing there with like in these static images. And then you have cutscenes like this that are playing right now in the footage here, where you just have a character standing there and then you have like dialogue sequences below with no voice acting, uh, which is how most of the game plays out. Uh, and that's where the game can feel a little cheap. Uh, I mean, I don't think that these games have like these huge budgets or anything. Uh, and overall, you can definitely tell it's a PS3 game. You know, it's it's not it's not one of the better looking PS4 games, but I I think it overall is still a pretty good looking game. Uh, I, I I think there's definitely a lot to like here with the visuals. Um, but yeah, it's just it's not like a technical powerhouse or anything like that. Um, Audio-wise, uh, it's got fantastic Japanese voice acting like every other game in the series. Well, except for the first one, which had English voice acting, which was really weird and didn't make any sense. Uh, but yeah, it's basically subtitled with Japanese voice acting that's like really good. Uh, I At least I'm pretty sure. I, I, I mean, I can't be the best judge of that, but I mean, it, it all sounds pretty great to me. Uh, the soundtrack is okay. Uh, it's... It's kind of in the background a lot of the times, but there are some like these really good like rock songs uh, that kind of play in some of the battles that really kind of get you pumped. Uh, there are some more atmospheric, darker songs for when the more like mysterious intrigue parts of the storyline happen. But the soundtrack isn't anything to write home about. Uh, as with previous games, I actually don't think I've ever really loved a soundtrack in this series. They've all been like uh, reliable and serviceable, but nothing that really stood out to me. Uh, and this is, it's kind of the same here, uh, unfortunately. Uh, sound effects are great. Uh, brutal, like, visceral sound effects that, that really help with, like, that battle system. Uh, there's all these, like, satisfying crunches when you, like, punch enemies and do, like, the finishing moves. So the sound effects are quite good as well, especially when you have, like, a pair of headphones on. Uh, they're really quite effective. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that about covers it. Uh, you know, a lot applies here to what I said about previous games. I've reviewed, I think, the fourth game. Uh, maybe that's the only one I've reviewed, though, but even though I've played, like, pretty much the entire series, or at least the games that have come out in the West, uh, this is probably the best of the game in the series. I, I've, I've enjoyed this game a lot. Uh, it took a little over 37 hours to finish, so it's a long game. Uh, it's gonna last you a while, and I didn't, I ignored a lot of the side stuff. Uh, I just did most of the side quests and then the main story. This series seems to be getting longer and longer with each game. I think Yakuza 5 is longer, though at 50 hours, but that makes sense because this is kind of like this prequel game. It's not like a mainline Yakuza game, if you will. So I can I kind, of, kind of understand why this game isn't quite as long as that. And that game had like, I think, four or five characters. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit long. Uh, the pacing is a little sluggish at times. 
and, and some of the dialogue can go on for a while. So it's 37 hours, but it, it, it feels longer. I, I don't know. I feel like it maybe could be a little more, a little brief. Like, I, I don't think this game needed to be 37 hours exactly. Like, I feel like the series is, is best when it's at, like, the 25 to 30 hour mark, like with Yakuza 4. But uh, still, if you're, if you're looking for a game that uh, has a ton of content and that's going to last you a long time, this will certainly do the trick. Uh, but yeah, uh, great game. I, I really enjoyed my time with this overall. Uh, uh, definitely one of the one of the like you know this this year has been already insane for games. The games in January have all been like really well reviewed, and I'm glad to see this game getting a lot of attention. I think a lot of people that haven't played this series before are picking this up, which is good because I, I want to see these games continue to come to the West. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.